In India, we have the lotus flower as this beautiful symbol. There's a reason that it is, it is used as the symbol all over of the spirituality of India. Because the lotus flower grows in the dirt, in the mud, in the muck. But it stays beautiful. It stays white, it stays clean. So it's in the muck, but not mucky. It doesn't drown in it. Doesn't even get impacted by it. And so when we speak about being in the world, what it means is being anchored, being grounded within yourself, within the divinity of who you are, as you move through the world. So think about that lotus. It's not about getting the values or the ethics or the stress or the craziness or the drama of the world on you. You stay anchored in your own truth, your own roots. But you move through the world. You don't shy away from the muck. You don't worry it's going to make me dirty. You realize this is the world I'm moving through. But who you are moving through it, it's not just about how quickly can I get through it and not get dirty. It's how can I, as I move through it, transform it. Because energetically you are making a difference. And yeah, there's a lot of games going on. There's a lot of nonsense going on. But realize that all of those games and all of that nonsense is the collective us agreeing to be part of a system of that. Our political leaders did not land on Earth in UFOs. I mean, we speak about them as though it were the other they somehow, as though multinationals, the corporate world, the political world, as though somehow it's this army of aliens who landed in UFOs and have tied us up and taken over our planet. They're us. They're homegrown. They are that which has been created out of the soil that each one of us is a part of. Which means that as long as we keep othering them, we lose our power to change anything. Because then it is the UFO dilemma. We've been taken over. They're aliens. I can't speak to them. I don't know their language. I have no idea what they eat. I can't access their planet. And you just hope they'll go away soon. But that's not our situation. We are creating them. Our fear and our anger is what actually is creating these leaders, we are electing. And it doesn't matter how you personally voted, because we are part of this collective society. And the, the answer is not a different political candidate. The answer is a change in how we feel. They are able, they the politicians, as well as they the marketers, they the corporates, it, they are able to sell us everything ranging from themselves as a candidate to a product that we don't need to buy but they want to sell us, to an idea that somehow my feelings are wrong, and luckily there's a bottle of pills I can take to make them go away. All of this 
is being sold to us, but we are buying it because of the anger and the fear and the separation that we are living in. And so whether it's a bottle of pills for your feelings, whether it's a product, whether it's a way of life, whether it's a politician, we are buying into a system that we are creating. And the question for every one of us is, what system do we want to create? And realize we are the answer. Every one of us is the answer. And what's beautiful that you've experienced here is how large this population is of people who are ready to stand up and be part of the solution. That energy, when cohesive, is absolutely enough to transform every system we're living in. But we have to be cohesive and we have to be courageous. Because it's not easy. A revolution was never easy. Paradigm shifts are never easy. Whoever stood up and said, having African Americans as slaves is wrong. I mean, whoever the very first person was who said, this is a wrong system, something needs to be done, took courage. But that truth was a magnet. And slowly, slowly, not even that slowly, it became a movement and then it became a reality to the point where today our entire way of thinking is so different that nobody could even imagine, imagine taking another human being of any color and thinking that it was okay to make them a slave. Somebody, a group of people, a couple hundred years ago, had to say, wait, status quo, not okay. Not going to be part of that. Every revolution has taken that courage. For Mahatma Gandhi to stand there with no weapons, facing an army of British soldiers with guns, knowing that he stood for a shift that needed to take place, that was ready to take place, that was already happening to courage. And that is what every one of us is being called upon to do today. The tragedy today is that we are lulled into believing that posting on Facebook counts as a revolution. <laughs> that somehow we've done our part because we've posted or shared something or have, you know, signed an online petition. And those are great because it's important that people know, yeah, yeah, we're all with you. So I'm not against those. But it's also essential that we move through the world as that. This is not a revolution about guns. It's not a revolution about war. It's not a revolution about that type of action. It's a revolution of every one of us realizing I've been numbed and made stupid and enslaved and cut off from myself, from truth, from love, from the creation long enough. I've bought your story of where my happiness is going to come from long enough. I've bought your story of how I'm somehow separate from the trees that are being cut down and the rivers that are being polluted and the children who are dying of starvation long enough. 
No more. Because I feel it in my heart. I know it isn't true. I know the car doesn't bring me happiness. I know the alcohol and the drugs are not the answer to that which is aching in my heart. I know I'm not separate from the tree being cut down. I know I'm not separate from the children who are starving. I know that loving and serving from love and being an instrument of service and allowing the divine to flow through me, I know that that fills me with greater joy than all the shopping therapy in the world. And because we know that, we live it. And as you go back, keep checking in with your truth. And keep connecting with those who know that truth. and live it, and spread it, and be it. And what you will find is, you are a magnet. Because the truth is a magnet. And that magnet is already becoming a movement. But each of us has to stay anchored. Because yeah, the waves are strong and they're gonna try to blow you around. But realize that you've got a very strong anchor. Hold on to it.